Hi, I'm Pierce Jens with Barraza Support. Today we're going to change the drive gear on a conical grinder that has GB 2.0 installed. Action. Remove your groundsman. Rotate your hopper counterclockwise until it stops, then lift it to remove it. Remove your rubber gasket. Grab your upper burr by the two lifting tabs, one of which is red, and remove it. Grab the knob on the side of the grinder and pull it directly towards the side to remove it. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the casing of the grinder. If you need further instruction on removing the casing, please see our video that explicitly explains how to do this step. I'm going to use my hopper lid to keep track of all the small nuts and bolts. We need to remove the three screws that hold down the gearbox. One of these screws is just a threaded screw. The other two have small nuts on the bottom side and I'm going to use my pliers to grab onto the nut while I unscrew the screw. Now that I have all three of the gearbox screws removed, I can lift the safety micro switch off of the posts in the back and then remove the gearbox assembly from the grinder. You will have to unplug the motor from the circuit board. At this point, we can go ahead and put the chassis to the side and focus our attention to the gearbox. The motor attaches to the gearbox with four Phillips head screws. Go ahead and remove all four of these screws. In removing these screws, I accidentally bumped this. A brass piece with a rubber grommet around it. This is your rear motor mount, and it goes right there. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and keep it in my parts tray until we reassemble. With the four Phillips screws removed, the motor and motor plate will separate from the gearbox assembly simply by pulling on it. Maybe do a little bit of wiggling. I can put the motor and motor plate to the side. And now you can see the gear. And the gear nut is the next thing we need to remove. The gear nut's 13 millimeters, but it's not very tight, so I'm once again going to use my pliers. When you try to loosen the nut, the gear is going to want to spin. But since it's not very tight, you can use your thumb to steady the gear enough to be able to remove the nut. This is a regular left-hand thread nut, so rotate it counterclockwise to loosen. Once broken free, I can unscrew with my fingers. I will remove the lock washer. Now I need to push the drive shaft out of the gear in order to change the gear. The tip of the drive shaft is a machined part and it has an exact fit with the bushing and the motor plate. If you hammer out the drive shaft with a metal hammer, you're going to mushroom the tip of the shaft and ruin the machine to fit between this and the motor plate bushing. Since we need to hammer it out, we're going to use something soft. We're going to use a plastic mallet or a rubber mallet. In my case, I'm going to use the back of the screwdriver, which is plastic and I'm just going to hammer onto it briskly. Now this is where things can get a little confusing since stuff is coming apart rapidly. The burr, paddle wheel, and washers came out of the bottom side. 
We'll put this down just for a second and concentrate on the loose parts here. I'm going to remove the drive gear, which we are replacing. Flip it over and make sure there's nothing stuck to the back of the drive gear. There are two washers that go between the drive gear and the gearbox housing. These washers are critical and must be kept separate of the rest of the parts, so put these somewhere special. I'm going to put them in with my nuts and bolts in the lid, and I'll show you where more washers are. On the other side of the gearbox, there's a brass bushing, the paddle wheel, burrs, and washers. These washers must be kept exclusive of the ones from the bottom side. In this grinder, I'm showing you four washers on the top side, two washers on the bottom side. Your grinder could have any combination of washers, but just please make sure to install them in the same order that you remove them. I have my burn shaft. I'm going to slide my paddle wheel on so that the male tabs in the paddle wheel fit into the female holes on the burr. I'm going to take the washers that were previously in this position and put them back there. This is exactly how I took it apart, and this is how I'm going to put it back together. Okay, let's put in our new drive gear. Get your burr, paddle wheel, washer assembly. Make sure the paddle wheel male tabs are interfaced into the female holes on the burr. Right there. With my gearbox upside down, I'm going to push the drive shaft through the bushing. Next goes on the washers that go between the drive gear and the gearbox housing. Remember we kept these ones separate from the others so as to ensure proper reassembly. Finally we get to put on the new drive gear. Generally you can support the burr with one finger or two fingers and push down on the gear to get it into place. Let's see here. This one's a very tight fit, so I'm going to try and rotate the gear just to a different spot and see if it looks that better. And it does. When pressed all the way on, the hexagonal shoulder of the metal drive shaft will be flush with the plastic of the gear. I have it pushed all the way on, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my lock washer, my 13 millimeter gear nut, rotate clockwise to tighten until finger tight. Now we need to tighten the 13 millimeter nut a little bit further, so once again, steady the gear with your thumb. It doesn't need to be much tighter, an eighth to a quarter of a turn will suffice. When tightened, there is minimal, in this case, no vertical slop of the assembly. It does not make a clicking noise up and down, yet I'm still able to rotate the gear. With the new gear installed and the 13 millimeter nut tightened, we can go ahead and put the motor motor plate back onto the gearbox. You'll see the machine tip of the drive shaft fits into the copper bushing. You may have to wiggle it. You can see the machine tip sticking up from the copper bushing. Go ahead and replace the four Phillips screws that hold this motor plate onto the gearbox housing.
with the motor reattached to the gearbox, we can put it back into the chassis housing now. My square chute gasket needs to be in place. If you look at the chute gasket, it has one side that's funny looking. It's a little bit skinnier than the others. That funny looking side goes towards the motor for the best fitment. My chute gasket's there, it's in place. Now's a good time to plug your motor into the circuit board. My micro switch is still dangling in the back, so we can go ahead and slide the motor into position. Motor mount, if it came off, and put it back on. The bigger part of the brass faces up. Replace your safety switch. Now we'll put in the gearbox screws here. There are two screws that have machine nuts on them. They go on the front right and the rear. You may have to use the pliers again to hold on to the very small nut to tighten it. These don't need to be very tight, just snug. With all three of my gearbox assembly screws in, the safety switch is in place, my motor's plugged into the circuit board, and my chute gasket made it back onto the chute. The chute is aligned with the chute hole in the chassis and the gasket is in between those parts. I've completed assembly and I can go ahead and snap on my outer casing. And now I can put on the rest of my accessories and do some grinding. Enjoy.